Today I'm reviewing the Cyberbot Mini Dual Motor Electric Scooter. Now the name is the only thing small about this. It is a beast of a scooter and is rated up to a top speed of 33 miles per hour, a hill rating of 35% and has a range rating of 18 to 25 miles. Now it's got some steep competition in this price range for dual motor scooters from one to $2,000. Competing against brands like Cabo Mantis 8, Varla Eagle 1, Hero X8, and the Outstorm. It ties the Mantis 8 in being the cheapest in this category at $1,099. So let's see how it holds up. Well, this is the speed test. I have a full battery, speed mode one, speed app open. I've got a flat stretch of road. Let's see how fast I can go. For speed one, I got 18 on the app and 18 on the scooter. Speed mode two, 24 on the app and 24 on the scooter. And the highest mode, I got 33 on the app, 33 on the scooter. The only scooter to top that was the Outstorm that cost another $900. The Mini is the cheapest in this price range with the second fastest speed. Here's a comparison of all three speed modes. Now let's see how long it takes me to reach 33 miles per hour in an acceleration test. I've got it set to the hardest acceleration, again with a full battery, speed mode three. Here we go. The Mini has two 500 watt motors powered by a 48 volt, 19.2 amp hour lithium battery. Now that power is pretty impressive. I reached 25 miles per hour in less than nine seconds. The total time from zero to 33 miles per hour took just under 19 seconds, making it one of the best for acceleration. Here's the difference in acceleration between the three speed modes. You'll notice the power is identical for the first 30 to 40 feet. Now there is the option to adjust the acceleration to a softer start if you like. This is the range test. I've got it on speed mode three, got a full battery. I've got my tracking app open, start workouts. Let's see what I can get. Here's a few things I liked and didn't like about the Mini. The first thing I noticed, especially when I grabbed the box, it is very heavy. It's gotta be the second heaviest scooter I reviewed just below the Outstar Max, which is just insanely heavy. The Mini weighs around 75 pounds, which is 20 less than the Outstorm, the biggest and heaviest scooter I reviewed so far. And I'm not sure why, but it's just not as stable as I'd like it to be. It just takes more to balance this scooter than I'm used to with scooters in this price range. And when I'm maxing this out, there is a little bit of speed wobble. I found that I had to hold the handlebars very firm to reduce that wobble. The handlebars are plenty wide, which is nice with the speed that this thing puts out because you do need to have very good control and steering. The grips are some of the bigger ones I've seen on scooters and there are three vent holes. It's got my favorite type of throttle, this finger throttle. This just feels the most natural to me and my hand never goes numb when using it. The LCD screen is pretty dim. I've got a tough time seeing it and I've got probably cloudy skies right now. In fact, the sun's behind a cloud and I kind of have to get at the right angle to where I can see it. I really like how tall this stem is and its angle. It's, I mean, it's almost straight up and down, but it is the perfect height for my 5.11 frame. There isn't any size rating for the Mini. However, I'd say if you're anywhere from 5.4 to 6.4, you fit on this just fine. The folding mechanism on this is something I've never seen before. I feel like I'm turning on and off a water faucet, uh, but it does hold the stem very tight. And I've gone about 20 miles on this and haven't had any stem wobble at all. The scooter stem doesn't lock to the rear fin, but there is a handle at the top to help carry it. Well, I had to stop to get an accurate reading on the battery life. And I just lost the first battery bar. I've gone 10.31 miles with a half an hour ride time. And the odometer, kind of hard to see on the screen, is 10.4. So 10.31, 10.4, that is the closest I've ever had the app in a scooter be. So this is like spot on. The deck is pretty wide. If I hold my feet side by side, they hang off the edge about two inches on each side. Putting my feet one in front of the other, I do overlap about six, seven inches. It's one of the shorter decks in this price range, but it does have a fin on the back end and it's durable enough to where I can just put all my weight on it and just stand on that. It's nice when I'm going fast or off-road because it does allow me to spread my legs a little bit more and get down lower. This is the first scooter that came with off-road tires. Uh, they're 10-inch airfield tires. For something this heavy and this big, I would have liked to seen a little bit bigger tire size. That would definitely help out with the balance. And last but not least, it has dual spring suspension. You'll have to wait for the off-road test to get my opinion on that. But I'm just bouncing on it right now, and it is, uh, it's very smooth. I mean, I'm going down about three, four inches. For paved road driving, it doesn't get much more comfortable than this. Just lost my second battery bar. I'm at 13.83 miles, 
42 minute ride time and been averaging about 27 to 30 miles an hour. Now both dual motors are always running. There's no option, no button to push for single motor. You turn it on and every speed mode has access to both motors. I've lost three battery bars. I've gone 15.54 miles with a 50 minute ride time, uh, averaging about 25 to 27 miles per hour. I'm down to my last battery bar. I've got 20.23 miles with one hour and four minute ride time. And been averaging the same 25 to 27 miles per hour. I have not felt a lack in power since I began this test. It has a very consistent battery. So I'm about halfway done with the last battery bar and I've noticed a big decrease in power and it's even going slower as I speak down to 14. <laughs> I think I might be walking for a couple blocks. When I got back to my car, I had 23.06 miles with a ride time of one hour and 13 minutes. The Mini is rated from 18 to 25 miles. I was just a couple miles shy of hitting the high end of the rating. Now what's really impressive was the elevation gain. My lowest point was 5,218 feet with over a thousand feet at the highest point. There were a bunch of ups and downs on the road which led to an elevation gain of 1,420 feet. I was impressed I got over 23 miles with that type of terrain. That makes the Mini the third best for range in this category, being outdone by the Outstorm and Hero, both of which cost four to $900 more. Now it's time to test the off-road tires and dual spring shocks on some rough roads up by Brian Head, Utah. So I'm going to the top of Brian Head Mountain. Oh yeah, there we go. Got some washboard here. And that is actually handling that pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it's bumpy, but it's a smooth bumpy if that makes sense. This is the three mile road and it goes to the top of Brian Head Peak. This is a ski resort just to the east of Cedar City, Utah. Super pretty up here. Yeah, this road is crazy washboardy. There's a lot of traffic that goes up and down this thing. And the scooter is just handling it like a champ. And usually on these types of road with a bunch of gravel and small rocks, the tires will usually slip out. Not really having that problem. This has very nice grip. I haven't slipped out yet. My brother's following me in the car behind me and uh, <laughs> I am going faster than he is. Already, this is one of the better off-road scooters I've tried. It's got plenty of power. The grip is fantastic. It's bumpy, but it's not rattling me to death. I can really feel the shocks working. And some of these washboards, it's just like a small little trampoline, just really taking the blow, really nice. <laughs> oh, this washboard, it's bumpy, but <laughs> this thing is just cruising over it. We're going 15 miles an hour. Yeah, if you guys are looking for an off-road scooter, I would definitely recommend this. This is the way to see terrain like this. <laughs> this is amazing. The Cyberbot Mini is rated up to a 35% hill, one of the steepest ratings I've seen. I found a paved hill about half that. Well, this scooter should make light work of this hill. It's about a quarter of a mile long. Speed mode three, I've got 75% battery life. I've got plenty of power to work with, so let's see how fast I can make it up this thing. Well, coming up to the first steep section, averaging 22 miles, 23 miles an hour. Still holding at 23, 23, holding at 20, oh, down to 20, back to 23. Oh my gosh, this is just crazy. We've got plenty of power. Coming up to the steepest part here, 23, 22, holding at 22, 21, 22, coming up over the top. 23 and we are there. Yeah, I might have to find a steeper hill. <laughs> that was that was light work. Whew. Now I did take this scooter off-road on some much steeper hills closer to its rating, which got me up just fine. This has got more than enough power for climbing. The Mini comes with front and rear disc brakes. Here's the stopping power from all three speed modes. It took 33 feet to stop from the highest level. The brakes really weren't my favorite, they were too touchy for something this heavy and fast. I would have liked to have seen hydraulic brakes for a scooter this powerful. The Cyberbot Mini can carry a rider up to 330 pounds, has a recharge time of around 5 hours, front and rear lights for some night riding, a bell, and cruise control. It comes with a 1 year warranty and free shipping in the US. Overall, here's what you get with the Cyberbot Mini, one of the fastest scooters with a top speed of 33 miles per hour a fast acceleration reaching 25 miles per hour in less than nine seconds, insane hill climbing ability for on and off road, and a killer range of 23 miles with a 190 pound rider. 
The only things I didn't like were the short deck, the touchy brakes, and heavy weight. Other than that, I would highly recommend the Mini, especially if you're going to head off-road. It is a beast of a scooter and one of my favorite times I've had in the country. If you want more info, I've got the link in the description with a code to save you guys $100. So that wraps up the review, hit that like button before you go, and don't forget to subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board, and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.